So my name is Matthew Vandelt. I'm a faculty member at New Jersey Institute of Technology. I'm going to be presenting uh, on behalf of my students, Syed Masood Shurkashidi and uh, Jin Fan, and as well as my uh, colleague, Dr. Matt Adams. Um, so today I'm going to be presenting on the experimental and numerical uh, behavior and modeling of reinforcement corrosion in UHPC structural elements. Uh, it's part of a research program that's, um, that's really ongoing. And, uh, and the results that I'll be presenting today are sort of um, uh, the results that we have to date, but um, the, a lot of the research is still ongoing. So the motivation behind this research program really deals with expansive deterioration mechanisms in, in reinforced concrete structures. So if we take a, you know, a representative slice through a, through a deteriorating you know, block or piece of concrete, um, there's multiple forms of deterioration that can occur at different length scales. So, um, you know, at, a, at one of the larger length scales, obviously we're familiar with corrosion. Um, as you sort of zoom in around aggregates, we can form ASR gel and, uh, and develop alkali silica reaction. And then there's water expansion at pores that occurs due to freeze thaw damage. And all of these result in some sort of uh, expansive uh, stresses and, and deformations that cause cracking in concrete and deterioration. Um, <clears throat> when we look at test methods for evaluating different modes of deterioration, oftentimes they, they're uh, evaluated in, in sort of isolation. Um, and so by that, what I mean is, um, you know, typically when we, when we do a, say a corrosion test or a freeze thaw test, we take a, 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 a representative sample that um, that is only undergoing that mechanism. And obviously we need to do that in order to, to benchmark um, uh, how the material behaves in sort of its, its best state. But we know that there's, there's other uh, coupling effects that can occur. So take, for example, a bridge deck. Um, that bridge deck may experience, you know, live loading or temperature and shrinkage effects, which result in cracking on the surface. Uh, and that cracking will accelerate the rate at which chlorides and, and aggressive uh, uh, materials move through, um, uh, through the surface and ultimately deteriorate the concrete. And so the benefit of new concrete materials, especially assist, you know, as, as, you've, as you've learned about um, systems like UHPC today, um, the benefits of those systems can become more apparent if we can look at their behavior in light of, of these different forms of deterioration. So the benefit to UHPC and other sort of ductile concrete materials, so high performance fiber reinforced concrete, ECC, hybrid fiber reinforced concrete, all these different materials restrain crack widths, and that can improve how water and aggressive ions infiltrate into a system. Um, as, you, as you're able to restrain, restrain cracking, um, that can, can ultimately affect the uh, diffusion and, and, and those sorts of properties. Um, an additional benefit to a lot of these materials is that they have a very dense microstructure. And, and so that further improves um, durability related properties. And so um, in this ongoing research program, we're basically looking at, at sort of three things. The first is to use experimental methods to understand how uh, UHPC and, and similar type of systems um, uh, behave under corrosion environments. Uh, so to, when they're reinforced with longitudinal reinforcement, What's the corrosion performance? And here, what we're specifically looking at um, are the effects of, of pre-cracking. So uh, if you get some initial cracking due to mechanical loading or some other effects, uh, how would that then go and influence the corrosion behavior? The next thing that we're doing is numerically simulating chloride ingress in UHPC systems and, and reinforced concrete and using that to predict, to predict uh, long-term durability performance. And so we're sort of using some of the experimental results that we're collecting to build numerical models um, to help us understand how changes in, in certain properties can influence uh, long-term durability. And then finally, uh, sort of a long-range goal is to, to try to use both the experimental and numerical, the experimental results and numerical simulations to predict long-term service costs on uh, bridge infrastructure with, uh, with a range of different systems. Um, this work is sponsored by, uh, by the New Jersey Department of Transportation and uh, as well as the USDOT's um, uh, University Transportation Center. And so we're looking at a range of different 
um, concrete materials with high ductility. So um, in particular, we're, we're working with UHPC uh, and Lafarge's ductile system. Um, we, we also are using an engineered cementitious composite, a hybrid fiber reinforced concrete, as well as some standard mixes that NJDOT has in their specifications. Um, representative tensile stress strain properties are shown here. Um, and I'll be highlighting the UHPC results, um, although I'm just sort of informing you that this is part of a larger uh, experimental program with some of these other materials. But UHPC, you know, is, is known for its um, very high strength and dense microstructure in comparison to, uh, to some of these other materials. Um, <clears throat> so the way that we're doing, running through the experimental program is we're using ASTM G109. And this is uh, an experimental setup where there's uh, two layers of reinforcement and uh, a sodium chloride uh, uh, solution that's placed on, on one surface. And over time, we're, we're measuring uh, the corrosion current uh, throughout the testing program. And basically every two weeks, um, that, that dam gets, uh, gets filled up with sodium chloride solution and, and then removed. And we're basically looking at a few different things. So one, we're looking at different types of concrete systems for our research sponsor. Um, next, we're looking at you know, whether or not there, are, there is pre-cracking uh, in a system, so how that can accelerate the corrosion process. And then finally, we're looking at different types of reinforcing systems. So for example, black steel or epoxy-coated reinforcement, or if there's epoxy-coated reinforcement that's damaged, we have a number of uh, systems that we're looking at. Um, <clears throat> so, this is looking at the surface of, of one of these beams. So um, effectively what I'm looking at is kind of what's going on uh, at the surface under this dam. And so uh, this is uh, one specimen with just a standard high performance concrete mix um, loaded to a representative service load. So we took a, uh, a representative service load and, and loaded it to that, um, observed the cracking that occurred. And um, we did similar type of cracking for all the um, materials that we looked at, looked at uncracked and cracked conditions. Um, and so obviously the UHPC gets to uh, higher load levels before you see cracking, and so it would have a higher service uh, load level as well. And, uh, and then you can restrain crack widths as well. Um, and then these, all these specimens are sitting in a 50% relative humidity room, and they go through 14 days of ponding and drying to accelerate the, uh, the time it takes for those chlorides to, to move through the system. Um, so what I'm sharing here is, is representative plots, and a lot of this data is ongoing, right? Um, but we're looking at exposure time on the x-axis versus macro cell current um, uh, on the, on the uh, uh, y-axis. And it, the, the y-axis is, is in log scale. Uh, the 10 microamps that you're seeing there, uh, that red sort of threshold line, is representative that anything above this line uh, would indicate that there is potentially corrosion going on. Um, and so here we're looking at a, uh, the, the black dashed line is a cracked concrete, um, sort of a mixture that would be typical of something built in the US in the early 90s or so. Um, and then uh, what you're seeing on the, on the bottom is uncracked and cracked data for UHPC as well as an uncracked concrete specimen. Um, so the cracked or ordinary Portland cement concrete showed signs of corrosion very early on. Um, within roughly a month time frame is when you began seeing corrosion there. Um, the cracked UHPC as of uh, you know, today uh, um, has not shown signs of corrosion at, uh, out to five months. And uh, other systems are actively being monitored um, uh, in this study. And uh, at a later date when this study is concluded, I'll have more to share on some of the differences between systems. But for now, um, this is some of the ongoing results. As we collect the information at the end of the test, we'll be uh, determining uh, acid soluble chloride content uh, through profiling. We've done this um, for some of the systems for, for other experiments, but that'll be another step at a later date. Um, what we're doing with some of these results is we're using it to develop a proposed simulation framework. And basically, in reality, we know that um, you know, uh, our structures go through some form of deterioration due to mechanical loading and other effects. So what we do is we're using uh, finite element structural analysis software to you know, load uh, systems to certain levels of service loading. Uh, from that, we do a chloride penetration analysis um, 
on that sort of deformed system. And so basically we're coupling the mechanical damage with, uh, with uh, damage due to um, uh, chemicals. And then uh, we run a uh, fine element corrosion analysis based on those chlorides. Um, we simulate rust volume expansion and look at, for example, um, how much uh, uh, rust thickness do we have over time. And each, at each time step, we simulate the damage due to the rust, and that damage due to the rust causes additional cracking, which uh, uh, accelerates the rate of, of, the, of the chloride penetration and, and so on and so forth. So sort of in this circular loop. Um, and so uh, we did a model verification on some of this. There, there's lots of um, uh, data that we've been verifying this on. But here, for example, there's a corrosion experimental setup of a cracked UHVC beam that's exposed to salt water and oxygen. And um, what, here what you're looking at is some differences between simulation and experiment in terms of kind of distance from where the crack is and then current density uh, on the y-axis. So we're able to predict some of those things. Um, the demonstration I'd like to show you today uh, involves a, a brief numerical experiment to show you um, sort of the potential advantages of, of how a UHV system can perform in comparison to regular concrete. So what we did is we designed a reinforced concrete and reinforced UHPC beam. We loaded those beams to representative service loads, um, so something that you might see out in the field. Um, we then exposed the loaded beam to a chloride environment. We simulated chloride ingress and corrosion. Uh, and then we updated deformations caused by the corrosion uh, due to rust expansion and continued the chloride exposure and sort of continued in that loop that I previously showed. Um, here, what we're doing is we're basically using two uh, finite element models. The first is a mechanical model, um, and we're using uh, a representative sort of lab scale beam from experiments that we've done in the lab. And then we uh, also have a diffusion and corrosion model uh, where we're um, exposing uh, water and chlorides to the system. Um, here, what I'm showing you is uh, plots of principal tensile strains for reinforced concrete and reinforced UHPC beams before any uh, chlorides or corrosion have made their way into the system. So, um, you know, the, the relative scale uh, is, is kind of the important thing here is just to note that as you go from blue to orange, you're experiencing more uh, damage, right? And so obviously you would expect a reinforced concrete beam under some amount of loading to have uh, uh, larger cracks and, uh, and, and sort of less finely distributed cracks than in a reinforced UHPC beam. Then what we're looking at is uh, over a certain amount of time, what, is, what would the, the sort of the um, chloride profile look like along the length of the beam? What you see is in, in, a, in a very short time, and this is representative of some of the ex experiments that we saw, but in a very short time, the, the, when you're in a crack environment, the um, chlorides make their way to the reinforcement in reinforced concrete, um, but you don't see that in the UHPC. And, and that continues out to longer uh, time horizons. And ultimately at the end of sort of the simulation uh, um, life cycle, you see a lot more damage in the reinforced concrete beams. So you're seeing damage sort of further out and that's due to the expansion of the rust uh, in the simulation from what you get in the reinforced concrete versus the reinforced UHPC. Three minutes, Matthew. Thank you. Um, so here, this is uh, continuing on with some of these results, looking at uh, rebar cross section um, loss. So in other words, if you start at 100%, what would occur over time uh, in, in this representative example? Um, and so the concrete obviously is losing, um, uh, the, the reinforcement area is, is decreasing far more rapidly in a reinforced concrete environment uh, as compared to a UHPC environment. So in summary, um, kind of three takeaways. The first is UHPC and similar uh, ductal concretes control damage through crack suppression and improve durability. And so that offers one uh, uh, sort of main advantage outside of um, even the traditional uh, structural approaches. We're using long-term durability experiments uh, to understand these corrosion properties across the same testing conditions. Um, so, you know, uh, a lot of these systems have been looked at, but um, uh, not necessarily under the same 
um, conditions. And so we're trying to um, tease out some, some variables in terms of how different uh, ductal concretes are effective. And then finally, numerical simulations offer an opportunity to understand these long-term durability um, of, these, of these new materials for service life predictions. So as an example, some of the things that we're currently uh, working on, um, we're trying to uh, look at service life modeling. And so, for example, if you look at cost versus time, um, reinforced UHPC, will, we know will be initially more expensive, um, but we can look at, you know, over time, what happens to the reinforced concrete system versus what happens to the reinforced UHPC system. We know that the reinforced concrete will involve repair, whereas the re reinforced UHPC would not. And so um, we're working on some, some demonstration examples uh, in bridge deck applications um, using some of these experiments and models. So with that, I'll just acknowledge uh, the two sponsors of this work, the New Jersey Department of Transportation and the US DOT's University Transportation Center in Region 2. And I thank you uh, for listening to the presentation. And feel free to reach out to me with any questions or comments.